Good day, fellow investors. When it comes to these kinds of situations, as we are seeing today, or as we have been seeing over the last weeks, it is more about strategy rather than what is the stock to buy. So I really foc focused myself these days to finding the best strategy, the best strategy that fits me. And in this video, I really want to share what I found and we're going to discuss the stock market crash, this crash, of course, what's going on, explain it, then why and how the bad news keep on coming and why and how that impacts the market, of course. Then I'm going to go back into history and compare it to other historic stock market crashes from 1990 onwards. And then we are going to see, okay, what was the best strategy that we as investors, not as speculative traders, because I don't think most of you sell your portfolio in the morning and buy in the afternoon. So we are really investors and we have to see how and what is the best strategy. And I'm also going to show you how is my portfolio doing that I started the 1st of January of 2000. 19. So let's immediately dig into the content. We know the stocks are crashing. We are 26, 30% down since the peak, which is total bear market territory. The main thing I hear is that stocks will go down more. And when people think that they panic, they hear a lot of bad news. There is more supply than demand when it comes to stocks. There is uncertainty. Nobody knows when this will end. It will last six months, two years. Nobody knows what will be the economic impact. Again, nobody knows. Depends on how long it will last till we are all immune, etc. So a lot of uncertainty. Markets don't like uncertainty. Nobody wants to buy because stocks can and probably will go down more. So that's why you see a lot of pressure on the selling side. And therefore, the result is what we have been seeing. It's in simple terms. The exit door is really, really small and many, many try to rush into that. And therefore, we see stocks down 30% in just a few weeks. So high uncertainty and more bad news day by day. And this is the result. If we look at the news a little bit, I think this is the New York Times. So close border with Canada, European Union said it would restrict non-essential travel for from the rest of the world for 30 days. So really economic lockdown, shutdown, stimulus package faded and didn't revive the markets as expected because that was also an action that we'll see how it will do, but also Signal, signaling that really, really shit hit the fan. So again, lockdown, can California keep 9 million people at home? So a lot, a lot of bad news out there. And then if we look at a little bit deeper in the news, it's all about panic from opinion. I don't know how I'm going to pay rent next month. Boeing mirrors the economy. It doesn't look good. Layoffs are just starting in the US and the forecasts are bleak. The result is 10% downturns in the market with no end in sight. Further, if you look at what are the projections, some say that there will be 60% of the US infected in the next six months. The US virus plan anticipates 18 month pandemic and widespread shortages. So really, really the situation looks bad. And then again, globally, people, people are unfortunately dying. The first person that I know, I did business with that person in the past. So it's a elderly gentleman about 70 years has unfortunately died. So my condolences to the families, but this is getting really, really serious. And this is also impacting the markets. I really want to go into historic stock market crashes, really show, okay, how to behave in a crash, what is important when it comes to a crash, what happened in the past and what might happen also in this case. When? I don't know, but this is my strategy and historically it proved okay for long-term investors. And that's what I'm going to do again. December 1916 to October 1917, down 31%. Then it rebounded again. But you can see also the declines are usually sharp and fast. 
and then 1990 to August 1921, this is the Dow Jones we are looking at, down 44% in a year, practically down, 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 down. And uh, again, then it rebounded till 1929, one of the best bull markets in history, the second after the one we have been enjoying for the last 10 years. But then came the Great Depression down 89% over, what is that, three years. So really, really the biggest crash that we know. But then again, you look at stocks, you see the bull run up, a lot of exuberance that resulted then in the crash and the Great Depression. Now the central banks and everybody are reacting differently than back then. So it might be a positive for the markets. However, let's go a little bit deeper into strategy. And it took, yes, 25 years for the market to recover. But also those that invested, let's say, at the bottom in 1931, 1932, they were up 10 times with big dividends from 1931 till 1954. So that's also what I'm waiting for. I don't know when we'll see the bottom, but I know that the purchase I made close to the bottom will probably make up for all the pain that I will be, that I am enduring now and I will be further enduring. So I have to stay liquid. I have to stage my purchases, but if I can buy at the bottom or close at the bottom, that will reward me hugely. So that's also, that's just my strategy. You have to see how that fits your strategy. But you don't have to wait 25 years for the recovery or 20 years from the bottom till the top. The market was already up 4.5 times with big dividends from 1931 to 1937, 1932 in this case. So just a reinvested yearly dividend or two yearly dividends in that bad period. So as Buffett says, you have to invest through thick and thin and especially through thin. So that gives you 4.5 returns usually or something like that if the situation can be and will be compared to the biggest crash in stock market history with the Great Depression. And that's also something that might give you a positive note on what's going on. So if you keep reinvesting, if you keep liquidity enough if you stage your purchases and you hit the bottom that will eventually come the bottom always comes somewhere then you'll do well and you'll end up richer than you were before this started so worst case scenario investing we end up again okay as investors we accumulate more assets we accumulate value and that's the whole point of investing markets go up and down all the time when those are up you can take advantage of them when those are down you buy more and take advantage of what others are selling in panic that's my strategy for as long as i know worked okay in the past let's see more downturns from november 1968 to june 1970 down 30 percent then again up then again, 45% down from 72 to 74. And even Warren Buffett said that in 50 years, there have been four times that the stock of Berkshire fell from 40% to 60%. So practically every 12 years, his stock, his portfolio fell more than 40%. He was just accumulating businesses. And that's also my plan, reinvesting dividends. Also 32% downturn from August 1987 to November 1987. But then again, that was first the bull run up and then just back to where it was in 1986. So not really meaningful. Something closer to today. This is the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 fell close to 50%. But then again, 34% down from 1999 to September 2002. So pretty significant downturns. However, again, it recovered and those that bought September 2002, those were already rewarded pretty, pretty quickly. So that's also one way to look at things. From October 2007 to February 2009, I was mostly buying from February 2000, no, from, from, from May 2009, I started really buying till 2011, but on a market that didn't rebound as fast as uh, the Dow Jones. So I had 
time to accumulate a year or two and then of course it rebounded even faster and my returns were even faster but my market where i was buying this is croatia fell 80 percent so i'm used to 80 percent declines i survived already one also in argentina less last summer and that's investing that's something that i accept as volatility and try to buy the bottom and then see how it works out in the future I can lose 100% of my position depending on where, but I can make five to 10 times my money, especially in current situations. And now we are 30% down, perhaps when you will be watching this in a few hours or tomorrow will be 45 or something like that. But that's the market and uh, that's something we can't control. The news is there, we don't know what will happen. It's hard to forecast anything at current uh, time. So focus on value and see how long can you stage your liquidity and how long can you be patient, but start taking advantage of what's going on. So the conclusion, nobody knows how long and what will be the impact. Bad news continues, market continues to fall. Volatility is a certainty, that's a given. As investors, we can only buy value when we like it, keep having liquidity, reinvest and buy more if it goes lower. The bottom purchase will be the most rewarding, will cover for the current pain. And do I know where it will be? Unfortunately, no. On my portfolio, so I started this portfolio with 100,000 in uh, January of 2019, staging a little bit the liquidity building it through 2019 and adding money, but I call it my lump sum 100,000 portfolio. I am down 14% since inception, so it doesn't even look that bad. Of course, 2019 was a great year, but we are just back. If there wasn't the bonus, the jump up in 2019, and I was down, what, 13, 14% uh, since started, in January of 2019, it wouldn't even feel bad. So it doesn't even feel bad now. And if it goes lower, I still have some liquidity. And these are the positions that are discussed here on YouTube. So Kudian, this is just the profits purchased, sold when it sold when it went up, took out the profits, and those profits are going down and down. But okay. And then Vedanta also discussed here. So I have now 10% of my portfolio, and I have to see how to balance that cash that I have left, the 9,000, stage a little bit, did a purchase last week, will do a purchase probably if things continue like those are going on in the coming weeks and months. And then, then of course, we'll try to borrow some money to increase the long-term returns and also increase the returns here to leverage a little bit the returns with limited risk of margin calls, etc. That was the strategy of my portfolio and I will simply stick to it. So thank you for watching, looking forward to your comments, subscribe, click that notification bell to be notified when a video comes out. I'll be back to my normal research soon, researching stocks, researching businesses, learning about businesses and see how those the, their outlooks are for the next five to 10 years and then buying the best businesses we can find. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.